Today, we'll talk about probably one of the most well-known seed estimation algorithms called the common filter. When I first learned it a few years ago, I wasn't able to grasp the intuition on what the common filter is doing and how to actually implement it. To me, and at least to some others that I know, it was mainly because we started by going through all the complicated derivations of the common filter equations, and by the end of it, our brains were already exhausted, and we didn't even remember anymore why we derived it in the first place. So today, I want to try something different. I'm gonna split the discussion of the common filter into three parts. The first part is about what common filter is and how to use it. Second is on how to actually code it. And for those interested, the third part is about the derivation of the common filter equations. In this video, we'll only focus on the first part. To understand this, I also assume that we already know some basic knowledge about multivariate Gaussian and state space system. So instead of driving all the equations, I'm just going to give you all the equations that we need to actually implement the common filter. Don't get me wrong, I think understanding how the common filter equations are derived is important and can give us additional insights on how common filter actually works. But let's not do that here so we can focus on the intuition. Let's get started. A state describes the condition of a robot at a specific time. For example, a location of a robot on a 2D plane can be considered as a state. State estimation is the problem of estimating the state of a robot from noisy data. In the real world, we may already know the motion model of our robot that allows us to track how the state of a robot changes over time given its initial state and the applied control signals at each time step. Unfortunately, the motion model is never perfect. This can be because of imperfect parts of the robots and many other reasons. So relying only on the motion model to do state estimation can only give us noisy state estimates. Okay, but robots typically have various sensors on it. Can we just take the measurement from these sensors to get the state of our robot? Well, sensors are also not perfect and typically are noisy. But now, seems like we have two different ways to get some sort of state estimates, each with known uncertainty. So can we combine the prediction from our motion model with the sensor measurements to get better state estimate? And this is where the common filter can help us. If we have additional information about the state of our robot, as long as they are somewhat informative, we can combine this information using common filter to get a better state estimate. The intuition is that the more likely state is probably the state that falls within the intersection of the motion model and the sensor measurement. Now the question is, how do we concretely combine this information? Before we talk about equations, let's first talk about the assumptions used in common filter. First, we assume that our robot has a linear motion model with Gaussian noise. So we can write the equation that explains how the state changes as we apply a control signal in this form. Second, we also assume the robot to have a linear measurement model with Gaussian noise. Finally, we assume Gaussian prior for the initial state of the robot. Of course, these assumptions sometimes are not realistic, but they allow us to drive the equation for the common filter. It turns out that even with these assumptions, common filter is still a powerful technique that we can often rely on in the real world. Okay, so now we're getting into the common filter equations. There are two main steps that we need to perform. We call these the prediction and update steps. The goal prediction step is to predict the state of the robot based on the motion model after we apply a control signal. And this is the equation we need for the prediction step. Since the model is Gaussian, the prediction of the belief state is also Gaussian. And since Gaussian is parameterized by the mean and covariance, we want to compute the new mean and the new covariance after applying the control signal. Here, the mean signifies our belief of where the robot is after we apply the control signal, while the covariance represents our uncertainty. After we do the prediction step, we assume to have received a measurement ZT from our sensor. The goal of the update step is to update the belief that we just computed from the prediction step by considering the measurement that we just received from our sensor. The uncertainty in the belief state should then decrease as a result of the update step. Now, this is where I'm going to start giving the common filter equations without actually deriving them. These are the equations that we need to perform the update step. The first equation is to compute the residual, or the difference between the sensor measurement and our latest prediction. The second equation is to compute what is known as the common gain. Common gain can be thought of as some sort of ratio, and it determines whether we trust the measurement more or the prediction. Finally, we compute our new belief state using the residual and the common gain. And as we can see here, if the common gain is high, the new belief is largely affected by the sensor measurement. Again, we're not going to go through the derivation that gives us all the equations for the update step, 
but I hope this can still help us to at least understand how common filter can be used and what is actually needed to implement it. Now let's take a look at a concrete example to see how we can use these equations. Imagine a robot moving in a room without obstacles. The robot is equipped with a sensor to measure its location in the room. These sensors are not perfect. However, the manufacturer provides us with information that tells us how inaccurate these sensors are. In addition, we also know the motion model of the robot we are using. This means that we know the A, B, Q, H, and R matrices. Let's say that these are the matrices. Say the state of the robot is its X and Y position in the room, and the control inputs are the velocity in both X and Y direction. The initial belief of the robot is that the robot is located at 0, 0 with sigma 0 as the uncertainty, and the robot moves with constant control inputs. The question is, what is the state estimation after one time step if the measurement the robot gets after applying the control commands at t is 0.93 and 1.77? To answer this, we just need to use all the given information to perform the prediction step followed by the update step. First, let's do the prediction step. We literally just take the equation and plot all the available information to that equation, and we'll get this as a new belief of where the robot is currently at. After the prediction step, we take the measurement data and perform the update step. Again, we just need to take all the information we need and plug that into the equations. So first, we compute the residual, and then we compute the common gain, and then we finally compute the new belief. And this is our state estimation after one time step. Let's do a quick recap. So we have a robot in the room, and we have an initial belief of where the robot is currently at. This initial belief is represented as mu0 and sigma0. The state of the robot is its x and y coordinates, and the robot is moving with a constant velocity ut. After we apply the control signal ut, the robot moves, and so does our belief. To get the new belief, we perform the predict step. This new belief represents where we think the robot is currently at based on the noisy motion model. After we perform the predict step, we assume the robot to have received a center measurement ZT, and once we have ZT, we perform the update step by first computing the residual, the common gain, and finally the updated belief. As a result of the update step, the uncertainty of the updated belief should decrease. And this makes sense because we just used some new information from our sensors about the state of the robot to update our belief. You see, once we have the equations for the common filter, it's not actually that hard to implement the common filter. In terms of coding, we just literally need to write two functions, one for the prediction step and one for the update step. So that's it for today's video. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to actually implement the common filter in Python using only NumPy. See you next time.